Oh my god, hi! <laughs> you look so good. I don't. <laughs> so we're in full hard-boiled egg mode today. Be because I'm going to be doing some fun drag makeup because I love the creativity and fun of drag makeup. And while we do that, we're actually going to be also talking about the first episode of RuPaul's Drag Race season 13. This could be considered a little review. I don't know. I literally, I don't know if it's just the viewfinder, but like, she looks like an egg. Like, hey, what's up? It's me, an actual egg. So <laughs> season 13... We knew that it was in production during COVID and everything. By the way, I'm using, what is this product? This is the Becca something. Let's find out. Let's be professional. This is the Becca Aqua Luminous Perfecting Foundation Skin Cover Tint. Amazing, perfect skin cover. Um, so I'm just going to start with that uh, on like a dry sponge today. Because that's how we're going to do our base. Um, I, we knew that this season was going to be a bit weird because they were filming during COVID, um, which is like to be expected. Uh, Hollywood was at a kind of a standstill for a while, but we knew that things were going to come back and start free filming. And I'm actually very happy that Drag Race is back because for me, I think I mentioned this in my last video. I'll link it because I'm a professional YouTuber now. Um, I love reality TV shows. It's one of my favorite, like, methods of escapism, I guess you could say. So for me, watching Drag Race is just, I always look forward to every single episode. I watch pretty much every version of it. I watch Canada's Drag Race. I watch UK's Drag Race. I don't watch Holland uh, just because I don't speak the language. I keep up with some of the stuff, but in general, I don't really watch too much of it. Uh, I usually, if I am watching it, it's just for the runways. I'm just doing a, a face base right now, just so I can kind of work off of that. And if I have foundation on my face when I go in with, like, contour and highlight, it just blends a little bit easier into the skin. And I don't even necessarily need to worry about it being, like, the right foundation shade, as long as it's, like, a foundation, you know? Because uh, by the end of this, it will not matter. <laughs> She's a beauty queen! So now I'm going to go in for my highlight and I'm going to be using this NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop in like really, really pale. Um, I don't know what shade this is exactly. It's not like it really matters. Um, so this season they did quite a big format change. I feel like maybe around season seven, I think that, I don't know if people, like viewers started getting kind of annoyed with the fact that every season is kind of the exact same. Um... Or if it was just them trying to anticipate, like, what people would be wanting down the road. But every single season, they try to do something a little bit different. They've been doing it a lot with All-Star seasons. So, like, in previous seasons, they would um, basically just, like, you know, they, they introduce the, the, like, we vote off someone every week rules. Like, the typical All-Stars rules. And then the most recent season, they did kind of like a weird, complicated one. If you watched the most recent All-Star season, it was really weird. Like, it wasn't a bad system, but it was basically... Let me see if I can explain this in like a really easy, quick way. Uh, every week, there would be one winner, and that winner would lip sync against a random lip sync assassin from a different season who would be like a guest on the episode. And if the person who won that challenge won the lip sync, then they got to vote out who they chose. If the lip sync assassin won, then they, like the lip sync assassin read the lip sync that like the rest of the people voted on, sort of like survivor rules where it's like the majority wins. It was kind of complicated and honestly, I, it was a lot. And I really hope that they change out this time. But in normal drag race seasons, they do switch things up a little bit, but it's never been like this intense. I'm gonna make this really hard for myself in the edit, and that's fine. This bitch deserves it. I'm gonna go in contouring. I'm just using this old ass Kat Von D shade and light, like the cream palette. It's really not that exciting, and it's really not new, so don't follow my lead. Um, so what they're doing this season is they're actually doing, um, like every single person, they're coming in in twos into the workroom and immediately going off onto the main stage, and then they're like lip syncing there. So 
every single person coming in lip syncs for their life, but they're like, they're not really lip syncing for their life, which we'll get into in a second. So starting off, I will be going through every single queen and just my opinion on their entrance looks. Um, and like, maybe a little bit about the lip sync. Honestly, I feel like there were some memorable moments from the lip syncs. But in general, it was pretty like, it was okay. Most of the queens did well, but I didn't feel like every single queen was like memorable, I guess. There were already some injustices on the drag race stage, which we knew would happen because that's how it always goes. Like every single season, there's like some kind of travesty on drag race, but I've it's already happening. So <laughs> that's fun. I'm glad we're being consistent. Um, so the fun thing about this format is I think it gives everyone kind of a chance to shine. So with previous seasons, I feel like, and if anyone's watched RuPaul's Drag Race like multiple, multiple times, you'll notice that a lot of the queens kind of fall behind the first few episodes. Um, and usually if they're going into someone's backstory, if they're talking about like their history and stuff, that's usually the episode that they're going home. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where it'll be like, the queen will start crying because she survived like a car accident or something. And then that's the episode where she gets voted off and goes home because they have to cram in her, the, the footage they filmed of her crying at some point. <laughs> so it's very consistent. That's how they've done it for many years. And usually that's a great way to like read the edit of Drag Race where you can kind of like tell at least like you can pick up on storylines really easily that way reading the edit if you've never heard that term it's a thing that so <laughs> years ago when i first got into drag race i was working at an escape room and this girl that i worked with was the one who kind of got me into drag race and she taught me like kind of what reading the edit is which is basically that you just like you read the edit i don't know um and you take a look at like how people are being portrayed, what they're saying, what the confessionals are like, because usually that's how they like really, really push storyline. That's like how they get you. So like usually you can kind of read the edit, at least in the first few episodes. Um, and doing that is a great way to tell A, who's going to kind of go home. But more importantly, you can usually tell like the archetypes for that season's queens. So usually they're like the bitch will get the bitch at it. Um, which is a really kind of fun way to figure out who is going to be filling out what role. Um, and so usually for me, because I've been watching Drag Race for so long, I can usually tell kind of who is going home, who's going to be a front runner, like really, really early on, which I don't really mind, but it does, that looks so hot, but it does kind of get annoying sometimes where I just want them to switch up the, the way of doing things, I guess. So every single queen gets a minute, they get their little introduction, which I mean, they always do regardless where they're like in front of um, the doors when they first walk in, and they say their catchphrase, and then they go <clears throat> to like music, and then other people react to them in the confessionals, and they're like, Jessica Jolly, Ugh, what a bitch, she's from New York, I don't know. But the fun thing though, is that because they go right to the judges panel right away, I think it's great for the judges, because it's really giving them a chance to see everyone. Um, and really get a feel for all their contestants up front. Um, and I love that it's giving us a chance to really see their lip syncing skills, which I think will give us a good idea of sort of like down the road, like where they'll be in terms of how well they'll do if they're ever in the bottom. So today I think for the eyes, I'm going to be using the Roxy Roxasaurus palette from Makeup Revolution. Just like pretty colorful and bright, so that's going to be nice. And I'm actually going to be putting it on before I set any of this because it helps it stick longer, which is a trick that I learned watching Trixie Mattel. So I'm going to take that blue lagoon like on the end. So you know how in America's Next Top Model, every season they do like the audition process where they take in like 30 girls and, um, or I think it's like maybe sometimes even more than 30 and those 30 or some girls will like meet with the judges one-on-one -on -one and kind of plead their case, I guess you could say for like telling Tyra why they deserve to be there. And the judges kind of grill them, ask them questions. They make them like strut. I love that because first of all, it actually gives people a nice mystery as to like if the person is going to make it onto the show, which is always nice to have like at least a little bit of surprise in the show. Cause like 
that also like America's Next Top Model is also one of those shows that is incredibly like formulaic which you know you might either love or you'll hate I don't it depends on who you are as a person I guess um but for me I kind of love it but I kind of want them to do that for the next season of Drag Race. Like, just take this format that they're already doing and, like, really go further, you know? Um, I'm going to do my eyebrows now. And I have a concept for how this look is going to be. So I actually am going to be doing it in red. I'm going to be using this red, red velvet from this palette as well, just for my eyebrows today. Also, I think I'm losing my voice. So my voice sounds, like, really weird today. That's why. <clears throat> So I think that they should just go like all the way there like really just go for it I think they should just get like 30 queens and make them kind of all audition because first of all <clears throat> being on TV at all is a great opportunity and people who have been eliminated first on Drag Race have gone on to have really incredible careers. So I feel like even if the queens that were on for like a day and got eliminated in the audition process went home, they would still do so well. And they would still get a lot of support. Because like, if you've been on Drag Race, you kind of made it, you know? Like, look at James Mansfield. James Mansfield was eliminated first and still, like she's doing it here on YouTube. People love her. She's one of my favorite queens. Also, so I'm going to start talking a little bit more about the queens and their looks in a minute. But before I do that, I do just want to say I'm not going to be judging them to the full extent as I probably will going forward for a couple reasons. One, because this was their sort of entrance look. Like in past seasons, the workroom look isn't necessarily like always the one that's really impressive. Um, it's usually one that they're going to be in for like 12, 15, 18 hours. So I've noticed that it tends to be one that the queens are like really comfy in because that works for them, you know? Um, so, and I'm sure that when they got dressed that day, they did not think that they were going to be meeting RuPaul. <laughs> and well, probably, well, I mean, I think they knew they were being RuPaul, but I don't think they were planning on being judged in their workroom outfit because the first day workroom outfit is like never factored into anything. So I'm not going to judge them too harshly, but I will still give my opinion on it because why else wouldn't I? Also, these eyebrows are like, ugh. Shush. It's just a shitload of slathering on powder all over your face. Do you see that flying right now? <laughs> No. Yes. So let's move on to contour and all that good stuff. Ugh. Ugh. Did you like that? By the end of my filming career on YouTube, I'm going to be able to just like have a long montage of the sound of me rifling through the thousands of makeup products I have, looking for one specific product I have, and like maybe or maybe not finding it. I'm going to be using this really old Christian Dior contour. I don't remember where or when I got this, but it's a nice contour for drag and for like doing intense makeup. It's not good for like everyday makeup though. So the first girl that comes into the workroom is Candy Muse and she is a New York girl and she's really repping, I guess, New York. Um, she is in this sort of weird like denim bodysuit. Uh, with like kind of patchwork around it and she's carrying this like comically large boom box with her and I'm not gonna lie I kind of love the boom box it's just really neat to have like a fun prop like that like I love whenever a drag race girl brings in something ridiculous um I just think it kind of adds something to the fantasy like she was very clearly kind of going for that like 90s ridiculousness kind of um, and I'm here for that. Like 100% I am here for that. Supposedly, there is a lot of kind of drama between Candy Muse and Aja. And I wasn't aware of this. I I'll be honest. I don't know that much about Candy Muse. Like I didn't know much about her before the filming started. So I can't really say 
whether or not it's like really intense drama. I'm assuming it is. She seems like a pretty vibrant personality. She seems pretty loud and boisterous. Um, and also based on kind of what she's been saying, it seems like she's going to get into some scraps with some girls. I don't want to typecast a girl. Obviously, that's not really my job. However, I do feel a little bit like she's going to be one of those girls that kind of if not starts fights, she'll probably get into some fun fights in this season. And that's not me, like, throwing shade. I, it just seems like that's the edit that they're giving her. So I'm going to intensify my contour right now, and I'm using this Anastasia Glow Kit. It just brings some nice, like, light to my face. So the second girl that enters the workroom is Joey J, and she is a really cute queen. I loved her outfit. She's very, like, I don't know. There was some shade thrown about her, um... I guess her taste level. She was apparently wearing like a chicken feather boa or like her jacket had like chicken feathers on it. But listen, and I know that that was like a shady thing, whether or not they're going to go with that whole like cheap queen aesthetic. I don't know. But I will just say like drag is expensive and costumes are expensive, I'm sure. So I am not going to sit here and be like, oh yeah, no, it's like a cheap thing. Like girl... Save money where you can. Who cares if they're ostrich or chicken or what? I also didn't know, did anyone know that you could like buy chicken feathers? Is that a thing that people do? I didn't know that that was real. Um, anyway, <laughs> she says that she is a filler queen, which I find very funny. I love a good nod to Drag Race producing. So they get on stage. The judges are like basically just questioning them getting a nice introduction. Um, they have to kind of explain, like, I think most of the queens are asked why what they've worn is, like, indicative of who they are as a drag queen. So they lip sync. Um, I'm not going to be going through what every lip sync song was because that, God, that would take a while. Um, I don't entirely remember what this lip sync song was. However, there were some bops that they were lip syncing to this episode. There was, like rumors by uh Lindsay Lohan there was some Carly Rae Jepsen there was some Janet Jackson there was the uh Pussycat Dolls so Candy Muse wins and Joey J has to get the pork chop which we'll talk about towards the end but that happens and then they bring on the next group of girls so the next girl to enter the workroom is Denali and she was gorgeous uh very cute very cute However, um, she made the choice of wearing skates out into the workroom for the first day, which would be fine for literally any other year that they, you know, the entrance looks. But this year, I don't think she realized that those would be the skate, like the outfit that she would have to go lip syncing in. Um, and that was a bold choice, and I commend her for that choice. It ended up paying off in my personal opinion, but maybe not. She had on this, like, swan princess outfit, which I thought was so cute. It looked really good. Um, and I just, I was feeling it. It was such a cute look. I loved her hair. It was so cute. It was like this really nice, long, kind of twisty braid that swung around. It was really, really nice. The next one to enter the workroom is Lala Ree. Now, Lala Ree, in my opinion, was not one of the best ones. She looked cute, for sure. Like, she didn't look ugly, especially in the face. However, her outfit was very, like, she went for comfort in the workroom. She was wearing nice white heels. Like, she had a very nice clean look. Like, her entire look was very white, um, which I did appreciate. It was very, um, I don't remember her name, but that girl from, like, Scandal, who's, like, literally always wearing a white power suit, like a pantsuit. It was very that, except for she wasn't wearing any pants. The judges did kind of laugh about that. They had a moment where they were like, mm, not wearing any pants. I just didn't feel like her look was the best. It was very, very, like relaxed pretty basic so they get on the runway and they're doing their thing they are kind of they're lip syncing they're talking to the judges or doing all of that i think that michelle threw a little shade to 
the girl, but I, you know, I didn't feel like it was anything too bad. They were going in pretty gently this episode. So they do the lip sync. I did think that uh, Lala Ree did like a really nice job. She did, she looked good. It was fine. But in my opinion, the standout star was for sure Denali, who lip sync, I guess lip sync, lips, who's doing her lip sync on ice skates on the main stage. And in my, at least they didn't show her slipping. They didn't show her falling. Not even once. But Lala Ri won the lip sync. And I'm not here to disparage her win. She did a good job, of course. But I'm shocked because how are the judges not going to recognize that Denali did that all on ice skates. Like, it's ridiculous. So I'm going to blacken up the outer corners here with this Sonia Kashuk palette, the Eyes on Neutral. I think it's in that one. Um, really old palette for me, but this is like an old essential. I use this all the time. So the next girl that comes out is Simone. And she looks... I personally, I don't think that I really enjoyed this look particularly. Um, just because in my mind, it was a little um, boxy. So she was wearing this like dress that was made up of a bunch of Polaroids of her that was kind of like stuck together with like jewelry rings. And on the one hand, I thought that it gave the dress like this really cool kind of um, like chain mail almost look, which was so creative, like super interesting. But on the other hand, I thought that it looked so boxy. I was just so impressed with her promo look that I just wanted that. Like that's all that I wanted from her and I just didn't feel like I really got it. So the next queen to walk into the workroom is Tamisha Iman, and she is really pretty. To me, she's kind of the Jasmine Masters of this season, and I don't mean that to discredit her. I mean that she's kind of like an older queen. She's been here, done that, and she seems to kind of... I think she said that she's been doing drag for 30 years. She's something of a drag mother uh, for a lot of drag queens, and honestly, like, even her look is very, like, I don't know... All Stars, I think it was four, whatever recent All Stars that Jasmine Masters was on, I'm blanking on what year it was. It was very that, like it was very, um, it was cute and I didn't dislike it. She had these really cool shoulders. I was actually really feeling her outfit. I didn't like her hair though. Her hair was incredibly flat. It was a very shake and go wig. And if you don't know what that means, it means she took it out of the bag and put it on her head and she gave it a little shake and she went. Tamisha was talking about she survived uh, or she was in remission for colon cancer. She was supposed to be on the previous season of Drag Race, but she wasn't able to because um, she got the call for season 12. And then literally the next day or like a couple days later, got a call that she had cancer and like she had, they had to act fast. So I felt for her so much in that moment. Um, but I mean, she seems to be doing well now. She's here. Um... And I remember when they talked about that, I was like, oh no, Drag Race has this weird history where girls will talk about like the darkest moments in their life and then literally immediately get booted. And if they don't get booted that episode, it's like the next episode. So they do lip sync. They're like, you know, lip syncing up a storm. Um, and honestly, I just gotta say, both were really good, but Tamisha, she was just channeling Je Janet Jackson. She was a little stiff in terms of, like, I mean, she's clearly not in her 20s anymore, but at the same time, like, she was moving. She was moving, she was shaking, she was really going for it, and I was watching her being like, this is Janet Jackson. She was doing such an incredible job. Simone won, and Tamisha has to get the pork chop. So I'm just going to go ahead and add like some shimmery sky from this palette. Um, so up next is Got Mick, and I am very excited for Got Mick. So Got Mick is this season's, um, or I guess like Drag Race's, first ever trans man to perform on the show. And I know that we've never, you know, discussed this on this channel, but I am a trans woman. So I kind of feel obligated to stand 
and be very excited for Gottmik. Um, and I hope that Gottmik does very well because I think that, you know, when we think about trans people and the argument for trans people being on Drag Race, I think a lot of people talk mainly about, you know, trans women, uh, competing on the show. I think a lot of the times trans men get overlooked because society is stupid. So Gottmik comes out, they're in a really, really exciting, exciting outfit. It's like almost like a loofah, like a bunch of like tool. And the makeup is incredible. Gottmik looks so good. Uh, it's like white face paint with like these really cool shapes. I'm actually really excited to see what Gottmik brings to the competition. Based on this, I'm, I have no worries, no issues. So after Gottmik, Utica Queen comes out and I have a fun kind of love for Utica Queen because I feel like Utica Queen is a strange, strange duck. Utica Queen is wearing this incredibly clashing patterned pantsuit. It's very all over the place in like a really fun way. Um, it's like, you know, plaid and like polka dots and like crazy ridiculous clothes. And then on her head is this redonkulous like gigantic strawberry which is a mood like that's a look in my opinion is it a good look i don't know so they go on the stage they're lip syncing and i honestly feel like both did a really good job i feel like got mick was a little bit more kind of sexy going for the emotions of the song i believe that that was the time that they were doing rumors by lindsay lohan i think utica queen was going very comedy like very very comedy and got Mick one, and Utica Queen got the pork chop. So up next is Rosé in like this really cute all pink like leather jacket kind of bodysuit situation. Also I'm going to do my eyeliner and I'm actually using a black cake liner for that. And the fun thing about Rosé is she is so like pink. She's very monochromatic and I love that. And when I she came in, she reminded me so much of um, Lemon, not in terms of like how they look or anything, but it's just that like monochromatic situation. And seeing that, am I the only one that kind of really wants them to do like, I don't know, a fun like theater review situation? And they could call it like pink lemonade because lemon and rosé so cute so rosé is the willem of this season in that rosé has apparently done everything from i think it was like the voice or like you know one of those singing competitions i don't remember specifically what which one might have been like america's got talent i don't know is this even in the slightest probably not and yet here we are so the girl coming in after Rosé is Olivia Lux, who is a really pretty girl, very gorgeous. I was not wild about her outfit either. It was kind of baggish. Not to be cruel, not trying to read a girl. It just, it looked very nice when she wasn't moving. But when she did move, it did look like it was kind of restricting movements ever so slightly. So they go on the main stage, they're talking, they're having fun, and Rosé actually loses the lip sync. <laughs> So that's fun for her. So I went ahead and went maybe a little overboard with the eyeliner, but you know what? I'm feeling this. It's very intense, but it's kind of fun. So let me just throw on some lashes and then we'll go over the last three girls whilst I'm doing like blush and finishing touches. Can you kind of see the glue on this eye? Yes. Are we going to let that stop us? No. So the next queen to walk into the workroom is... Tina Burner. I feel like Tina Burner is so campy, so kind of um, costumey, but not in an insulting way. I love a campy queen. I feel like campy queens really shake things up because so many queens will just wear really glittery, nice dresses on the runway that I'm not, not to like shade those queens because I feel like those are amazing, amazing, like gorgeous looks. But then you look at someone who's more of like a campy queen and they usually bring something that you would just never expect to the runway. And I love that. I love seeing things that are like different and unique. So she's wearing this like fun, ridiculous, like firefighters outfit. It's really cool. And she seems like she's going to be a really fun addition to the cast. Tina Burner is one that I'm hoping she'll bring some comedy. But she also seems like she's going to get sort of the, um, like the you're too much, like the Eureka edit, where there it's, it's going to be like, gone, she never shuts her mouth. You know what I mean? 
So next up, next up is Kimora Hall. She is supposedly related to, not like physically related. I believe that her sister, like her drag sister, is Jada Essence Hall, who won Drag Race. And that's a tall order to fill. So I'm happy for her and I hope she does well. She looked so good. Apparently she was wearing a Bob Mackie gown. It was like this gorgeous, like orange. I, I saw that and I was like, okay, cool. Like this, she's a pageant girl. We love a pageant girl. There has to be at least one pageant girl every season. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna find a nice kind of glittery highlight. This is NYX Born to Glow and it's kind of stupid. Like it's, it's not a, a daily highlighter for me. It's like really shimmery and kind of gold, but I, that's kind of perfect for what I'm trying to accomplish right now. 2000 years later. So I did a little bit off camera. I had to basically transfer over a bunch of my stuff to my computer. So this is kind of where we're at. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Elliot with two T's is the last queen to walk in and she's fine. She's in like a red pants and like a red jacket and kind of like a fun blouse. Maybe not as polished as some of the other queens, but she has like a fun energy. And she, uh, it's three of them doing the lip sync this time. It's Kamara Hall and Elliot with two T's that are in the bottom. Tina Burner wins. So throughout the episode, they've been sending people, like people have been getting the pork chop. It's basically like a loser's lounge. And they've been there the entire episode and they're like, speculating about if they're even getting a second chance or if they're going home. But the entire time I was like, well, obviously they're not going to send all of you home because like I checked the episode count and this season has, I think, 14 episodes or maybe even, I think, no, I think it's 16 and I'm like, you're going to send home half the cast? What? Like for what? But they're not going to send home half of the cast, you know? And obviously they don't. Obviously RuPaul goes, I think that he like for a second gives them like over like an intercom is like, hey, you know, we're sending you home. And then comically Michelle's like, but Ru, and he's like, oh, maybe you can figure it out. However, the fun twist is that it seems like it's going to be All Stars rules where they have to choose one of the queens in the pork chop lounge to go home, which to me seems incredibly unfair considering that the other queens that have gotten out didn't get to watch the lip sync. Ow! That was fun. Overall, really fun episode of Drag Race, uh, and I can't wait to see what they do next. Thank you for watching me throw this all on my face. I feel like I did a pretty good job. It may not be, I don't know, it's, I think it's kind of fun. It's a little out there. It's a little Trixie Mattel, a little clownish, but you know what? I had fun doing it. If you enjoyed, feel free to subscribe, like, comment, do whatever you'd like to do. Um, keep in mind that I don't do just drag makeup all the time. Uh, this is something that I'm not I mean, I've done drag makeup before. I just kind of do it in my house. I've never actually like filmed myself doing it. And I also wouldn't say I'm at all an expert, but if you like makeup videos and you like, I don't know, um, someone who rants, who maybe reviews stuff on occasion, like, you know, I think my plan is to review every episode of this season of Drag Race while doing some sort of like drag makeup or something. Until next time, thank you for watching. Bye.